So now this is the last topic, and now we get into the more rare things, so we'll uh, go through this pretty quickly, and then Dr. Andrus will have some that are sort of similar. SI joint infection is quite rare. It only accounts for 1% to 2% of cases of septic arthritis. It's more common in older children, so early adolescence or adolescence. Uh, there are risk factors in adults that often don't come into play for kids, such as IV drug use, immune suppression, pregnancy, and trauma, uh, and endocarditis. So uh, not terribly common in this age group. There is uh, one paper that was recently published that has sort of showed that there has been an increase in the incidence of uh, SI joint arthritis and septic arthritis recently, um, but there's no real reason to explain it. It's not necessarily associated with uh, the presence of MRSA. Most common bugs, this is probably the most important thing to understand. Uh, Staph aureus, just like in other musculoskeletal infections, is the most common. Uh, however, there is a sort of asymmetric increase in the risk of mycobacterium tuberculosis. Uh, skeletal tuberculosis accounts for 3 to 5 percent of all tuberculosis, but it's asymmetrically involved in the SI joint with 10 percent of cases being there. And if you have sickle cell disease, again, you start thinking about other odd organisms such as salmonella. These patients will present with low back and buttock pain. They will not want to bear weight. They also may have fever. Uh, their physical exam is worsened by compression of the iliac wings, but also putting their, their leg in the Faber test. So if you put that in, them in the flexed, abducted, externally rotated position, this makes them more uncomfortable. So this distinguishes them from a septic hip, which, in which that position is the most comfortable. So they have basically an opposite position, which is uh, comfortable for them. Uh, radiographs, you know, you often will get them, but they'll often be normal. If you have really severe chronic disease or something that's going, been going on for a while, you may find joint destruction, uh, fusion of the SI joint, uh, or some uh, other findings in there, but it's pretty uncommon to find anything on radiographs. MRI is probably the best study because in the acute phase, you're not going to find anything on radiographs. You may find some fluid or gas in the SI joint. You may see some edema or associated osteomyelitis adjacent to it. Um, and some gadolinium will may uh, help you uh, figure out if there's any soft tissue edema. In the chronic phase, that's when you're going to start finding changes uh, that are more significant and may be found on CT scan or x-rays such as bone erosion or sclerosis or other uh, more chronic changes. Uh, labs are going to be elevated just like other septic arthritis. So you may have an elevated white blood cell count, ESR and CRP, uh, and blood cultures may be positive and may be the best way to potentially diagnose a bug if you have one there. Treatment for this is often non-operative, so antibiotics are targeted towards a specific organism, and you're going to treat empirically based on the most common. Uh, antibiotics is the first line of treatment here as opposed to IND, um, and again, you want to probably target Staph aureus. If you needed to read these, basically if you have an abscess present on your MRI, then that's a reason to go to the OR, or if your antibiotics have failed a treatment. So again, this is sort of a more chronic case. You can see that there's some changes here uh, on the SI joint where there's some erosion of the sacrum, uh, some widening of that SI joint. You can see sort of diffuse involvement uh, and edema through the sacrum as well as the, uh, the iliac wing. Um, and again, if you have a significant uh, chronic case, um, uh, that's not really salvageable, then you may actually need to uh, fuse them, uh, and that's what you see here with pictures uh, of the screws across. Um, but again, this is not terribly common. Risk of recurrent infection, so if you don't clear it out, then it's more likely to come back. A lot of these patients, particularly if they get into chronic situations, will have chronic pain, um, and obviously this is a sort of tough spot for hardware, so if you end up fusing them, then the screws often can be prominent and give uh, difficulties, and obviously they can get uh, sick uh, uh, systemically if you have this. Be sure to subscribe for more content and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at OrthoBullets.